Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat with his companions, the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And he said to them, Wallahi, I know the last man that will be saved from the fire and the last man to enter paradise. So tell us, Ya Rasulullah, tell us. He said, he will be taken out and walking across the Sirat. And he would have just made it past. And he is the only one left still looking at the fire. His deeds weren't enough to move him away, and he's just trapped right there. Then Allah makes a tree grow at a distance, and the man sees it. And he hadn't seen a tree in shade for such a long time. Then the man will not be able to be patient, and Allah knows that the human cannot be patient with something like that. That's why he did it. So then he says, my Lord, can you put me? Please, he says, my Lord, put me under that tree so that I can be in its shade. I haven't seen shade in such a long time. Allah says, I will put you, but on condition you don't ask me for anything after that. He says, I will not ask you. He puts him under that tree. Then after a while, Allah makes another more magnificent tree grow at a distance from his sight. He says, my Lord, after a long time, and Allah knows no human can be patient with it. Just put me under that tree. And I promise you, I will not ask you for anything. Allah will say to him, didn't you already promise? What kind of a human are you? He says, my Lord, I promise you this time, this will be it, this will be it, this will be it. So Allah then puts him there on condition he doesn't ask for again. After that magnificent tree, Allah makes a third magnificent tree, even bigger and more beautiful and with a stream underneath it. After a long time, the man says, Ya Rabb, I know I promised you. And Allah says, what this time? He says, just put me under that tree. I will never ask you for anything, my Lord. And Allah says, a debate starts to happen back and forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, deliberate. So he puts him under that tree finally. While he puts him under that tree, he is close to the door of Jannah. Then he hears noises from behind that door. Beautiful noises never heard before. Sounds of happiness and joy, laughter. Then Allah, then he says after a while, my Lord, just let me see what's inside behind that door. <laughs> and Allah knows that he cannot be patient. So then he says, I'll let you see, go. He goes and sees and he comes back out. And he is very sad, very tearful and very depressed. He says, what is wrong, my servant? And he says, my Lord, I realize that I'm the last person. <laughs> And there's no space left for me in paradise. The guy was going to ask for something in paradise as well. So then Allah says, go in there. Would you like me to give you from it as much as the world? And then the man says, Wallahi, the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He says, bi ya Rabbi. What, now you're mocking me, my Lord? Just teasing me now? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as he was saying this hadith, he laughed. They said to him, why are you laughing, Ya Rasulullah? He says, Inni rabbi. I am laughing to the laughter of my Lord. Before we imagine laughter of the Lord, we cannot imagine it, brothers and sisters. We just accept it as it is, without giving interpretation. But it's a positive thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs in a manner that befits him. We don't understand, we cannot comprehend or even give explanation. And he says to him, oh no, my servant. But my kingdom never runs out. How about I give you as much as the world and like it again and again and again and again. Five times and the man says, stop, stop. All right, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. In another hadith it says, as I am Muslim, it says as much as the world ten times. Uh, sorry, he repeats it five times and he says, and you will have ten times as much as this, five times as much as the world. So five times ten is fifty times as much as the world. For the last man that enters paradise, he enters it. And he lives in his beautiful palace and everything. And then they said, Ya Rasulullah, if that's the last man, what will be for the people up in the highest places of paradise? He says, ah, Allah says, that is beyond what anyone can even perceive. The hadith is long. But which one do you want to be, brothers and sisters? It's time to race. It's time to compete. It doesn't cost you anything. Jannah is for free. But it just needs your sincerity. It needs your patience. It needs your perseverance. It needs less complaining and more doing. Keep going, brothers and sisters. The time is short and soon it will run out. It's flying and in a matter of time, all your sorrows and sadnesses will go. And I end it with this beautiful hadith from Prophet He said, 
it'll, the, the saddest and most tra traumatized person in the world who never saw any goodness in his life will be brought to paradise and placed only once in there. Within that one, just placed in and taken out. And a man will say, oh my Lord, I have not seen a single sad day in my life. He gets amnesia and forgets every sadness he's ever been through. One other person we dipped once into hellfire and taken out. The person who has never seen any sadness or sorrow in this world, only comfort all his life and will have amnesia as well and say, I don't recall any comfort in my life. Brothers and sisters, compare the two. Do you want to be close to Allah? Or do you want to be the ones behind or the ones who fail? Work for it. Keep going. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds and forgive our shortcomings. Bless our brothers and sisters around the world, those who are in strife, our brothers in Palestine, our children of theirs who are our children, their family who is also our family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them, grant them the greatest of all rewards for their patience and perseverance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us as well and know our shortcomings and our inabilities, even though our hearts are with them. And we would love to give them victory and support them as much as we can, but only within our power. So let us work with what we have right now within the circle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in and do our best with the blessings which he has given us.